Hello, welcome everybody. What's happening out there on YouTube land? Going to go live today. It's a Monday. Hope everybody is doing good. What is happening? Who's out there today? What's going on? Let's see if I can get this going on down here. I'm trying to do a trying to do a double thing here. Hopefully it works out okay. A rotten eggplant is here today. It's good to see you. This way I can uh, see what's going on. Yeah, doing good out here. Loads and SK loads. Right, I got a, I got another screen. I'm trying to do all this fancy technology so I can keep this comments up so I can read them. All right, so we had this ELD uh, pre-trip thing. If you want to talk about that, I put that out and people uh, people had a heart attack about it a little bit. But uh, you know. Some of our drivers are getting tickets on their electronic logs for not uh, for not logging their electronic load. Ha! You're third today, Jay. Yeah, maybe it shows for third. Get in. You got to get in there fast. People are in quick. Ha! <laughs> yeah, let's talk about... Yep, too late, Jay. Let's talk about this. Our drivers, even though our electronic log automatically has you do a pre-trip and post-trip, they're getting tickets at the scales or wherever they're getting inspected because not showing any time. They have not shown any time on this, and that is a real problem. So you can't do a pre-trip with no time. There's, it's just not going to be good. What's going on, uh, Mr. Curry? Uh, you have to have some kind of time. If you're going to inspect a truck, okay, you have to take some kind of time. Now, they should be doing them anyway, and I appreciate that, Jay. Uh, this has been a big topic over the weekend here in the in the comments, certainly. Good. Get into the trucking industry. It's a good time to get in. But you got to make sure you follow all these rules. Like when you're doing a pre-trip, you have to log some time for it. To do a pre-trip, the DOT doesn't give you a specific amount of time. It just says, look, you have to be satisfied that the unit, both units, or however many units you have, are safe for operation and the load is secure. Okay, so you can't do that from the cab of your truck. You just can't. You know, there's no way to do that from your truck. It's impossible. Trucking wife, what's going on out there? Is that my wife? I don't know. Maybe she's watching from somewhere. Ah, that's, uh-oh, I'm being watched by the wife. Look out. All right, maybe not my wife. Not sure she's watching. She should be at work right now. Anyway, look, so if you don't log any time, how do you tell the DOT I did a pre-trip? It's on there. You go, well, I it's on there, but... There's no time. And he goes, well, how did you inspect the truck? Well, I'm satisfied that it's safe. How can you be satisfied if it's safe if you didn't take any time to look at it? No time. Oh, yeah, it would be cool to make an, a video with that DOT officer. You know, I've been thinking about writing to the DOT office. We have one in Crawfordsville, which is about 30 miles from here, and see if I could get somebody to do it. You know, but I don't have that kind. I would have to videotape it and put it on later. Well, we can work on something like that. You know, you should get a ticket if you don't pre-trip, and you can get a vi you'll get a log violation. Because people all say, well, you only have to do paperwork for the post-trip, and that's true. At the end of the day, you're required to, to do a DVIR if there's any problems with the truck. You know, at the end of the day, you also have to post-trip your truck. How can you do these things without any time? That's the question. And what's going on with ELD ex exempt for 10 trucks? I should, uh, don't let that go too far down there. Right. Okay. There are thinking about exempting fleets that have 10 trucks or less, which is a lot of owner-operators and small fleets, from uh, the ELD mandate. But uh, that hasn't gone anywhere yet, so they're working on it. They're thinking about it. Uh, I'm not a fan of it, of course, because, you know, why should they be able to cheat? The only reason you wouldn't use it is because you're cheating. That's what I say, right? Oh, oh really? There's a guy on face up the patrol? All right. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, and I have some of them on my Twitter. If none of you are on there, write them at Trucking Answers. And I've seen some Indiana State Police on there as well. And so, uh, you know, maybe we could contact them and uh, I could do some kind of video. I don't have all the, uh, you know, technology and uh, all the wizardry of uh, Jay there at Auto Transport Intel, but I could get uh, something going on, something like that. Yeah. Which you should go watch Jay on Tuesdays, right, at Auto Transport Intel at uh, 8 p.m. Central. Jay does a great live show about uh, auto hauling. So, you know, the uh, freight, if you want to haul freight, that's me, right? But I don't know anything about cars. Well, Jay knows some about cars. Maybe you want to get into car hauling. That'd be interesting. It's a challenge, right? And, uh, you know, so go see, look, check Jay out on Tuesday nights live, right? I'm there live. You should be there live. All right. So 
Uh, because it's really interesting. I find it super fascinating. I've always wondered what it would be like to try to squeeze out of three inches of car to try to get out of there, but that's, a, that's another story. <laughs> they also have to have electronic logs, car haulers as well. So that's the same thing. But look, I've a ton of people commented, oh, okay, not my wife. Good, that's good. So I'm okay on that. <laughs> a ton of people commented, oh, you don't have to do a pre-trip. You don't have to do this. You don't have to... Uh, you don't have to do any of that. You do have to do a pre-trip. There's just no time. You're required to be satisfied that the truck and trailer or two trailers or three trailers or car hauler with all the cars and the load is secure. So you have to know the cars are going to sit there. Your big coil is not going to come off. Your freight is in there. I open the door and look in there right and see what's going on. Whatever it is, you have to be satisfied that the... Uh, you're quite welcome, Jay. It, that the uh, that the freight is sitting there, that the truck is safe. How do you do it if you didn't get out of the truck? There's just no solution to it. People say, well, we don't have to log. You have to log it. What if you put down one minute? Could you go run around the whole truck, I guess, in front of a DOT officer and do a full pre-trip in one minute? I don't think so. And that is a problem. And people, we've had a couple guys now get tickets because it automatically puts it on and they go, oh, pre-trip. But if you didn't take any time to do it, how did you do a pre-trip? You can't. The same with a post trip. How did you do a post trip? You know, how did you look at the uh, sheet from the last driver, which may be you? How did you read any of that? Can I put it on my pizza from my house to go to the shipper to go pick up? No. Can you put uh, uh, personal conveyance on your house? I got another screen down here. That's why I'm always looking uh, weird. Okay. To go from the shipper to pick up a load? No. Personal conveyance cannot be used to go pick up a load because you've basically been dispatched on that load. So no, you can't personal conveyance to go get a load. That would be great, but th that's gonna do it. Are we gonna get Crab Company of the Week? Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about the Crab Company of the Week. I've had these other things in the works. I'm gonna do also a video about uh, company driver versus lease operator, uh, because that's a big thing. I see a ton of these videos with these lease operators. Oh, I make 1,500 a week. We're gonna do a video about who makes more money at the end of the day if you, after all your expenses and after all the things that a company provides to you? So that's going to be a good video coming up too. What company should you go to first? Well, there there is a ton of them. And like, you know, I don't recommend a certain company because it may not be for you. Like where I work for, I've been here for 16 years. We have people come and quit three weeks. You have to find the place that's right for you. You go through all the questions. You know, where do you live? Where do you want to work? Do you want to run the whole country? Do you not have any experience? Or are you just getting back in the industry? There's a ton of things to go through to find the place that you want to work. And then, because I want you to have a good fit. You should have a good fit in the place. If you start jumping around, that looks bad to other companies, especially if you got to leave. You know, that's the problem. Can you do PTI on a bobtail? Pre-trip inspection, of course, you would have to do a pre-trip inspection on a bobtail, the same as uh, any other any other vehicle, right? You're in Arizona, south of Phoenix. Well, next, right next to you, of course, is Swift, which is always the top crap company of the week. You know, they'll get you your license, though. It's probably not a place that you want to stay. Oh, three hours south? Oh, three hours south, so you're like um, north of Mexico City. Okay, no. So, but uh, <laughs> seriously, though, Swift is out there, you know, and, and this doesn't necessarily have to be a company that's near you. It just has to be a company that runs through your area. So it can be a company based in uh, anywhere in the country as long as they run by your house. You know, how often can you get home? Uh, how much does the school cost? How much does do they pay you during school? Some places pay you in school. Some places don't pay you. Some places make you pay money back. Some places don't. There's a lot of ways to go through that. So recommending one company, that's a tough, that's a tough call. Yeah, Knight, Werner's out there. Knight is basically Swift now. Ner Werner is out there. They're all, probably because it's so warm, they don't, they're afraid that drivers won't be able to start their trucks. Not sure about that. Ah. Oh, I'm, I'm on a second screen, which is kind of unusual, although I don't know why I'm saying that right. I'm watching myself in like a three-second delay, which is certainly weird. So it's hotter there, finally, in uh, south of Phoenix than it is here, which is good. But look, is everybody doing a pre-trip? Okay, and if you're not, if you're not doing it, okay, now look, if it's 10 below zero, I get it. Nobody's going to go out there and do a 30-minute pre-trip. I know that. But you got to at least turn on the log to on duty 
and sit there in the warm truck. Even if you're not going to get out there and do it, you got to show something. You know, five, seven minutes. At le- it, that's what it seems like it would be to me. There's no specific DOT time, and that is part of the problem. Because I had people write in that said, oh, you know, I didn't show any time and I didn't get a ticket. And then somebody said, I show four minutes and got a ticket. So that this uneven enforcement, it's hard to know how much what you should do because it's up to each officer. Is this enough time? It's not enough time. It's crap. And I, I, you can't go fight a ticket that's three, you know, 2,000 miles away. You're not going to fly out there to fight a $58 ticket or whatever, a $100 ticket. You're just not. You're going to pay it and it's going to go on your record. And so, uh, and at 119 degrees, a hottest day, a couple weeks ago was 119. That's, um, well, that's crazy. That's just too hot. You know, the uh, the air, I don't know what, I don't even think an APU would keep up with that on the truck. Maybe, maybe. The, the reefer, I remember hauling ice cream, right? Your reefer would just run 24 hours a day trying to keep up with that kind of temperature out there. So, right, that is that is the problem. That all, Each officer has his own way. So this, you put down six minutes and you're fine. This next cop that looks at it, he goes, well, you can't do a pre-trip in six minutes, so here's your ticket, and what do you do? You beat him up on the side of the road? No, right? So do you have to fight it? He says, well, it wasn't enough time. I mean, and you just don't have the time to go back. You can, What if it's on a Wednesday? You're going to take a week off of work, and you're gone for the week. Okay, so you have to take a week off of work, fly across the country to fight a $59, $200 ticket. It isn't, it isn't any good. It's possible to go on duty and put the delivery, post-trip, eh, you know, look, I like to have the post-trip separate. I just do. Big, huge Mike is in the house. I always show 30 minutes, but beginning and end of the day, everything between 50. Yeah, you know, 30 minutes is a long time. 30, I don't know if you should hit him with your truck. So 30 minutes seems like a long time, but look, you're supposed to take the amount of time that it takes. That it takes. So 30 minutes, you know, link, linking them together with the delivery is a problem. Because you're at the delivery, you're not doing a pre a post trip. You're doing your delivery. So you and plus your delivery would have to be at your final. You'd have to be done for the day there, which is certainly possible. You if you're done for the day at your delivery, then that'd be okay to to uh, to do it there. But I would look. I separate them so that there's no question. Look, here's a few minutes here, right? Whatever. Where it's no question. It's done. Ha! Ah, oh, that's funny. Auto correct doesn't. Oh, did it do that? Right. Uh, sometimes it'll correct to a bunch of weird things too, and sometimes YouTube will will cut them out of there so that it stays sort of PC and it because I don't want it to have a uh, you know like an adult rating or anything on there, so we don't want to go into that you know realm on there. So sometimes they cut some of it out there on on that because I don't I won't let them go to adult ratings on the channel. So um, you know, but log it separate in morning pre trip, right? Even okay, even if you're going inside to get a delicious hot dog that's been rolling around on that roller all night for breakfast, then put it on duty when you walk inside. Even if you're not going to do it, because you're going to get the ticket for the log, not for the trailer, just unless there's some kind of problem on there. You should, of course, look over your trailer, truck, and everything. Look it over before you leave. Open the doors. Check your straps. Certainly, if something's strapped on it, cars or coils or anything, right? Look it over before you leave. My gosh, you don't want that stuff falling off. That greasy pipes that come on there and slide all over the place. You got to tighten them every two hours. Get out there and do something with it. We can't be lazy with safety. That's the other side of it, right? With all the DOT and the two minutes or whatever, but look, safety point of view, you should still do a pre-trip. You should get out there. Even if it's cold, at least walk around the truck. Get your blood boiling, you know. You should be walking anyway. You should be out there walking. Anybody you follow me on Instagram at... Uh, Instagram, of course, at Trucking Answers, right? I, I do some, I walk every morning and I'm out there walking. So you can see me walking around in a bandana if that's something that interests you. So you should check it out all over there. My company allows personal advance and I was going home and dropping a trailer. And, right, I was going home after dropping a trailer and dispatch said no and took it away. Okay, why would they do that? They allow, you were going home. Yeah, you should be able to do that. You were going home after dropping the trail. Okay, so you bobtail home, right? And so you should be able to PC at home if they allow it. No problem. It shouldn't be any problem. But it is up to the company. If you're a company driver, it's up to them. Now, they shouldn't allow it and then take it away. That's crazy because then you can go into a violation. Richard, your wife is saying hello. You're on the road. Why aren't you at home with your wife and she's over here? 
Okay, because Richard is out making money in the trucking industry, which is great. Great for Richard. Now, they, the off, the, said by the DOT officer, yes, but they they said the DOT officer is, said it was wrong. You can PC, uh, you can PC home. If your company allows it, you've dropped your trailer, you're just bobtailing, you're going home, you, that's personal conveyance. That's exactly what personal conveyance is. You're using the truck as a car to get home. Personal conveyance. You're not doing anything for the company. You can't be going to the shop or anything. But if you're going home, absolutely. So get with if it's a big enough company, get with the safety person. And if it's some a small company, call the owner or whatever or whoever runs this place and say, what is this? What's the story? You guys are, you, I can do it. Can I not do it? That's crazy. It's like these officers that don't know what they're doing. Why don't you report to the same place? Right, right. I mean, if you're going home, that's the idea, right? Personal conveyance. Why are we not? It's the same. This officer, it's okay. This officer, it's not okay. It doesn't make any sense. It's maddening because you don't know what to put down. I recommend people 10 minutes. It seems like that is enough. Ha! <laughs> Loves his wife and hates the traffic. Well, that would be, everybody would hate the traffic. I agree. I totally agree. I lived, when my first job was in Chicago, when I first started driving in 1988, I got a truck school, I moved to Chicago and had a local job because there was no training. I just went to work Monday morning at the Economy Transport and they had like three trucks and I had this old Ford 9000 day cab and I made like 15 local pickups and deliveries a day in Chicago. And I lived there for a while and I grew up in Hammond, south of Chicago. So, you know, I hear you about that. And later, you know, we didn't move down until here to Lafayette until the mid 90s. So I had time to go through all the traffic. I would commute it up there. I worked for free to lay up there for a while. I would commute into town. I ran containers up back and forth in Chicago. So I hear you about the traffic. It's horrible. And now with the tolls, it's even worse. Yeah, I agree with you. I drive at night as well, right? That's why I'm here. I don't leave it till the afternoon every day. I don't drive at night. I So when I get up, I have to take a time off. And so then the time puts me into the afternoon and that lets me roll into the night. There's less traffic and less scales, you know, so if you can go over scales that are closed, that's perfect. There's nobody there to bother you. So you go work it at night, but that's not possible for everybody. I wish it was. You can work into that. You know, if you stay a place long enough, you can kind of canoodle your way into uh, whatever that means, into something that you can get the hours you want, the time you want, the freight you want, the pickups you want, everything that you want. Has anybody, I wonder, curious, has anybody, yeah, L.A. is worse, right? And plus you can't breathe there. Has anybody actually gotten a ticket for pre-trip other than our two drivers that don't know what they're doing, apparently? I'm always curious about that. You know, pre-trip, post-trip, you know, you have to look at that book, too. And you've got to look over the book. That's part of it. You've got to examine what the last driver did, supposedly, right? I don't know if people do it. Oh, you know, somebody asked me, and the comment disappeared. So I'm going to answer this here in the comments. Can you run a paper post trip book and get an elect and have an electronic log? Yes. Yes. It only says you may do the post trip electronically, not that you have to. Only the log part is required. So you can run a paper book and an electronic log. And so the log can have the post trip, a book can have it. See, right, Mr. Skeptical is skeptical of this, but to the pre trip, it doesn't say fifteen minutes minimum. The DOT has no time requirement, no time requirement, right? 395.2, only that it is done, no time. Pre-trip says you must be satisfied that the vehicle is safe for operation and that the load is secure. How do you do that without logging it? Because on-duty time is defined as any time spent inspecting the vehicle. That's one of the things listed there. So if you're inspecting the vehicle that's on duty time, how do you inspect the vehicle without logging it? You can't. You simply can't. And a pre-trip is required every day to maintain, to make sure that the vehicle is safe for operation. I guess you could tell the DOT officer, I've always heard you have to log post but not pre-trip. Right. Okay, there's no time. That's because there's no time requirement. But you're required by the DOT to ensure that you're satisfied, and it says satisfied, you, the driver, is satisfied that the vehicle is safe for operation, vehicle on any trailer, three trails, whatever, and the load is secure and safe to move. And so then we go to on-duty time, which says that you must 
log on duty all time inspecting the vehicle, working around the vehicle, any of that. Inspecting is listed, specifically listed. So if you were to go out and do a pre-trip and inspect your vehicle, how do you do that without logging it? It's impossible per the regulations. There's no time. There's never been a time listed for any of these things. You're supposed to log it like you do it. So the DOT doesn't put any minimum time. 15 minutes came from years ago when we used paper logs back in the dinosaur ages, basically the last year. And because it was broken up into 15 minute increments. And somebody said, well, if you just drop it 15 minutes, you're good. And so that's how it always worked out. Pre-trip, post-trip, right? It was always 15 minutes because the log was broken into 15 minutes. Now, drivers are turning it on, right? Right, now you can do whatever on pre and post, but what's happening, like I said, for our drivers, is they're just, they're not thinking about it, and they just drive away. And so it goes from sleeper to drive, no time. Then, then what? Now we have no time logged at all. Or at the end of the day, the same way, they'll get in, even if they do a post or whatever, the first thing they do when they get in, or when they stop, or when they're weekend or whatever, is they log out immediately so to save their time. You can't do that. Oh, thank you. You can't do that because you're saving time, but it's a problem. Okay, what truck stops do I go to? I love loves. I'm a Diamond member. I get all my free drinks. I get free showers whenever I want. That's why I always smell good if you ever see me because I actually get to shower. But I go in there and get free drinks even if I don't fuel. Always try the loves because they have less of these large company trucks in there. No waiting, usually. They're very clean. I like them. I'm a huge fan of them. That's my favorite truck stop. After that, probably Petro is probably nicer after that. See, but Pilot Flying J, they get a lot of company mega trucks, Swift and uh, Werner, and they all have accounts at these places, night. And so that's okay that they're in there, but then you get a lot of trucks in there. And some of them, pilots, are dinky. I don't know. Oh, they, I don't know how they built it. So you go in there and there's five people in line. And, uh, okay, Flying J is the best pizza. Mr. Skeptical gets a plus one for that. That's absolutely true. But if you're waiting in this long line, like I said in other videos, right, that takes your time. So that's sitting there on duty. Now, some people go to off duty there, which they shouldn't do. But uh, that is wasting your time. Right, a lot of people go to Love's. It's clean we're looking right now. I have an open com data card which is super convenient. I can go anywhere I want that takes com data, which is basically anywhere that's a good way to fuel. Some places have to go to pilots, so I get that, so you have to sit there, but if you can work into a place that allows you to go wherever you want and you make the choice, that's good. And they should do that, okay? You're a professional, you know, you don't want to wait around, so you're not going to go to a place that's waiting, and that's going to help the company as well. They're going to get more done. Driving at night has its downsides. You can't see, well, roads are closed because of the weather. Okay, it, right. I run traffic all the time. I have Google traffic running constantly on the dashboard, a phone attached. In the winter, I bring another tablet and have that running usually as a radar map. And so it is it can be a problem, but there's less traffic on the road because everybody's trying to sleep and they're all driving around the truck stop trying to find a place to park. So I'm all for night, right? Get those night glasses, those yellow night glasses. You know, and basically, the new truck, too. You get a new truck with LED headlights, bango, bango. It's like daytime in front of you all day long. Thinking about buying a truck and hauling wood for the Amish people. 300 a load and all loads a day. Would that be a good idea? Hauling wood for Amish people? Ha! Huh, that's hilarious. Is that true? Do you know, Amish people, would they? I guess they would hire somebody to haul wood for them. Ha! Huh, that's something. I have three hours to get to my house. I have no more driving time. Can I put it on PC? I don't know. Why are you going to your house? Do you have a load? Uh, if you're going home, and then you'd have to talk to your company. Can I log personal conveyance? Like where I am, so I've said, they don't allow it. There's no personal use of the truck here. You can't take it home. You can't go to the store. You can't do anything. You can't here. It's their truck. They tell you what to do, period. So, do I have a CB? Yes. I like the CB, you know. I have a Cobra 29 in there with night watch and weather band. Uh, it lights up at night. And so, I use it mainly for traffic. And in the winter time, it's on, but I don't talk on it. I'm not one of these guys blibber blabbering on the CB. I use a lot of weird words today, by the way. I don't know what that word is. But, you know, it's just on in the background in case somebody says, hey, there's a huge wreck up there. Look out uh, over there. Right. 
otherwise, you know, I don't listen to it. I'm a ham radio operator too, so I do some of that because you get a little bit better people on there that are not always talking and swearing and, you know, saying stupid things on a ham radio because you actually have to go take a test, you know, be licensed to get it. So I kind of like that a little bit better. Mr. Skeptical says if you're about to, our truck's empty, right. And, and your company allows it if it's a company truck. They have to allow it. My place says no, thank you. My electronic log doesn't even have it. It's not in there. It's not allowed. I can't. Personal conveyance, they don't want you running the truck. That's funny because they'll let you fuel anywhere you want. Like they could care less about money, but oh, driving that truck home four miles or whatever? No way. And personally, I don't want to bring it home. Let them have their $100,000 truck sitting at the terminal and they can do it. Yeah, see, you can't do it at your company. It's up to them, right? It's their truck. And I would leave it anyway, okay? I'm close to work anyhow, four miles. But it wouldn't matter how far I was, I'd leave it there. Let them deal with it. They can fix it when I'm at home, too. They can do services on it. You know, I don't want... And yeah, what if it's sitting at your house? You know, I don't have a garage or anything or a driveway, right? So, and then somebody breaks into it or something happens. I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. When, it, when I'm here, it's over there. I'm at work in five minutes, and we can talk about it once I get over there. Oh, you can take it home, but you have to log it? Right. They don't allow personal commands. Right. See, I don't take it home. Right. No way. I'm just not doing it. I don't want that sitting in my driveway or wherever you sit it. It's too much. It's too much of a risk. It just too. Ironically, you could do a pre-trip at your house then before you left at the truck. But then you'd have to pre-trip the trailer. Oh, that's a good point. You'd have to do a pre-trip when you leave your house legally because you have to be satisfied that the vehicle is safe to operate. And every time you change units you'd have to be satisfied the new unit is safe to operate legally. So then you go somewhere and get a trailer, you then do another pre-trip on that trailer. Legally. Legally. How about that? Two pre-trips a day. Possible. Switch trailers a day. Maybe you drop and hook or go change trailers. Another pre-trip on that trailer. Can't just pick up that trailer and go. You have to be satisfied. The trailer's legal and safe to operate during the day, including the any freight that might be in it. You park your trailer in front of your house. Well, you live on two acres, right? I'm in three. Can I put it on PC? If they allow it, yeah. If they allow it, you can go home on PC. You're putting it at your house and it's empty. You're not taking a load. You're not trying to move a load somewhere, right? I hate the love. Small, no laundry, right? I, I don't do laundry on the truck stops. Nothing but subway. That's not true. There's loves. I'm going to go buy loves today. That has a Hardee's in it. How about that? Guacamole burger, that. Right, and laundry. Uh, all right. I mean, I've seen, I saw trucks up that had laundry that had Bluetooth on it. So your phone got a notification when your laundry was done. So I thought that was pretty good. Do you have snow chains in the Rocky Mountains? Yes. You'll have to have chains out west. I'm actually going to do a video here later this year uh, installing chains on a truck to uh, because most people probably haven't done it. So I'm going to get somebody that's got some chains, and we're going to put a chains on a truck. Depending on the state, you're required to have chains certain times a year. I should look that up, right? It's coming up soon anyway. And uh, get that. Okay, I'll look that up, right? I'll do a video about chains, what state it is, what you need. You should know how to put them on if you have them, and you have to carry them anyway. A lot of states, you have to carry chains even if you don't put them on. So you're going to have to hook those chains on. You know, they got those holders on there, whatever, and carry them. You're required to carry too long. Two doubles and two singles, right? Each state's different. That's a good idea, right? I'm gonna put that down and note that right here, and we'll get a video going about chains. Even though it's 119 degrees at some people's houses, uh, it's not gonna be that way forever. Has my wife gone on the other trip? Yeah, you know, when I started driving, I drove for this place called Ames, which is a department store. If anybody remembers, like a Zare, if anybody remembers that, or Kmart. And uh, my wife came with me on that, and we went around a few times and. You know, over the years, she's gone with it, and uh, thank you, Trucker Nick. Uh, I appreciate that. She's gone with me sometimes, but, you know, it's really, it's not great. You have to drive a long time and stop, and, you know, she's not a huge fan of it as you, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> but she has gone with me. She's been in a lot of states. I had my cats. We had our cats with us for a while, too, so we took a couple cats at some point, you know. This cat that I have now who's sleeping right, she hasn't been out there, but I've had some cats that have you know, a couple of hundred thousand miles under their paws as well, which is pretty neat. They'd sit up there in the dashboard and uh, just watch the road go by. Huh, that's for sure. What is my favorite brand of tractor? All right, now look, I like Western Stars. Drove one year, only because of years ago I drove one and I just loved it. It was so quiet or whatever. 
I like Volvos as well. They're really quiet. The mechanics, we have one Volvo. Mechanics don't like it. They said it's a huge disaster to try to work on it. And, you know, my Cascadia, people downplay Freightliners, but I really like it. The LED lights, this new, the new one... Right How to make a truck that is set up, you know, for a driver. Everything is, seems to be where it should be. It runs good, right? It's all there's a lot of storage. I like it because of the headlights. I really like this truck. We have the one Volvo. It's quiet. It's nice. Western Star is the best. Well, I think you could put any engine in it, right? <clears throat> uh, International. That's true. International is the worst truck going. I mean, I'd rather ride some old. Who knows what, right? They're horrible. The little tiny, we, I wonder if it's a rental, little tiny button. What is up with the little button to turn on the headlights? What are we doing? Why is it, why are all the switches way over here on a flat panel and they're not, they're all the same <clears throat> and the ones that you need are way over here and the ones that you don't hardly ever use are right next to you. The radio was way down here. I'm pointing down, but you can't see me right. Way down. I, I, I didn't like it. I don't like it. I'm not a fan. It's not very roomy in there. No, no way for me on an international. If I have a choice, I guess here, if they bought all internationals in a few years, I'd just have to drive them because I don't have any choice or quit. But if you're buying your own, no way. Yeah, ours had an engine light. The rental had an engine light on. I go to a rental company and they have an engine light. They go, oh yeah, they're, it's always like that. He goes, it'll come and go, which it did. It would turn off and come back on and turn back off. We had some of the older ones that uh, were had all the EGR problems on them and stuff, and it, you'd forever, almost every other day, you had to regen the thing. I've never had to stop and regen this truck, and I got it in the fall. I've never had to do a park regeneration yet on this truck uh, with the Detroit. And, you know, that, which had that come, which had the international engine, which is called uh, Max Force. Thank you. <laughs> and that was horrible. Right. I never had to pack our engine, right? I like a Pete's and all that. These long nose and though with the little tiny, you know, that. I'm just not. It's hard to drive, right? I'm. Uh, I want it to be convenient for me. I'm the one. In, not that it looks good for everybody else to look at it, but that it's convenient for me to drive, and it's easy for me to drive. I'm the one that's got to drive it. People looking at it, if they look at it and don't like it, I don't care. They don't pay my bills. That's what I say. No. Nah. Uh, they're okay. Maybe they might be good for construction. Yeah, but when you drive them, forget it. There's no room in them. And the cat, you know, I had a Columbia with a cat. That's the last one I had. It was like a 450 cat or something with dual exhaust. I'm, and it's very unusual in a Columbia. And uh, it ran good and everything, but they're done with the market. So, and I guess as a company driver, it's another one of those things where I don't get any say in it. It isn't up to me, and, you know, I don't get any say. The room is where, what, like three, what do they call them, 389s, 387, right, Pete? Big looks like a Freightliner, basically. Looks like a it looks like a fleet Pete, I think is what they called it. Then you have a full cab. You have the full all the room in it. The long nose is just a lot for looks, you know. And you don't get the fuel mods. It's not as aerodynamic. Fuel mods is important if you're paying for it. If you're not paying for it, then you get more loves points. That's been the worst part of this new truck. As I'm, they cut out you know thirty percent of my loves points because uh, because it gets better mileage. And people go to the pilot for that ten cents a gallon. Look, you got to sit an hour. That's not worth it. You know, you're not gonna. It doesn't. That kind of money's not changing your life. Somebody's like, "Oh, I had forty dollars on my pilot card." I'm like, "Wow, that's, you might as well retire." I told him, "That's great." You know, this. So don't do it. Don't do it for that, right? Love's cleaner, roomier too, bigger, easier to move around in. Usually easier parking. Pilot worst. Horrible truck stops. The one in India at exit four. What it down there? Oh my gosh, that one. Holy mac, what a disaster. And the J cross street from it, out Harding Street or whatever that is, that's terrible too. Right, bigger is better. He's a big guy, so he needs room. Be right. And 18 Freightliner, same as mine probably, Cascadia, right? It's called a spaceship. I think it's a 387. Yeah, I think so, right? I think that it is a 387. A lot of TAs, they've gone downhill too. They were better. I used to get the free magazine. I like going in there a lot. You know, but they're... They're like taking it. They're like, oh, well, Pilot doesn't have to do anything to, the yard, to their place, so we don't have to do anything to our place either. Let's just put some sandwiches in the warmer and be done with it. And that's a, they, 
They put these saying you'd knock on the top of it, right, and it's all hard. It's been there since the morning. That's ridiculous. It's like they don't, they want you to come in and buy stuff, but then they don't want to give you any kind of decent stuff to buy. No good. No good at all. Oh, and the TA that I went by uh, coming home last week, they're at the 130, 130. On I-65 in Indy, north of Indianapolis. Holy crap, half the lot is paid parking. I, I looked at that from the road. I'm like, wow, there's like 50 million paid parking spots. Although a lot of companies are paying for that now, which I saw, which is nice. Companies have in their ads now paid parking. Paid. They're, so they're, if you have to pay somewhere, they're paying you back because there's so many of these parking places that are charging. Companies are paying you back for that, which is super a good deal, really for drivers, so you don't have to pay $10, $20 a night, whatever it is. Although, depending where you park, it might be worth it. All right, I've never been to Canada. I The last I went to Canada, I used to drive for 3M. You're like, well, this guy's driven everywhere, just about. Okay, I drove for 3M, and I went to Canada. This is like early 90s. I think I was still living up in the, near Chicago. And so we'd go back to Canada, and <laughs> and I only got inspected on the way back. That's it. Always going to Canada, they're like, oh, yeah, come on in. Coming back, Americans are like, oh, pull over there, and they're inspecting everything, and they're like, oh, well, this looks like uh, videotapes, which is what it was then. I go, yeah, that's what the bills say, right. He's like, oh, well, we never know what it is in there. I go, yeah, I see you guys twice a week. What are you talking about going up there? So, and I'm not, now, and then, too, you, was a very early cell phone, so you didn't have the cell signal. Now I think you can go and drive your all the way up there with your same cell phone without problems, but it used to be international calling, and then you have to change the money, and you get all this weird money in different colors, and they always scam you on the transition if you don't have Canadian money, and now you need a passport or a passport card, which costs you money. So I'm not a huge fan of it, and basically it's just a bunch of Tim Hortons serving coffee and donuts to everybody. Uh, well, I appreciate that you like watching my videos, and the crap company will be back soon. Uh, 77 inch Volvo well you know you can get a bigger truck by going to South Bend there and have them make you a huge 200 inch sleeper uh, yourself uh, you go too big and you can't back the thing in yeah Tim Hortons delicious coffee that's what they say right oh hey hey Tim uh, every other street has got a Tim Hortons on it right and and I'm thinking man the gas is cheap up here it's, I think station's like 53 cents right then right and that's a I'm like oh wait a minute that's two something a gallon because it was a dollar here so that isn't any good <clears throat> Although I didn't have to pay for any of it again, the same thing. And the time to cross, so you'd need extra money. I do see that a lot. You'd need extra money to go there. They should pay you extra because you got to sit there in line and sit there coming back. So no good. For me, I'm not doing it. Canadians, they can keep the queen and all their money or whatever. And their co coins with the holes in the middle of them. And the colorful money and everything's got the queen on it. And it's just all ridiculous. We see why we beat them back years ago. So now we're done with them. Ah! Yes, different color money and donuts. That's correct. Those co that coffee and donuts, I don't want it. The money's not the same size. <laughs> Do I check trailers for fire ants? Uh, I never thought to uh, to check the trailers for fire ants. Hopefully, they're not building a mound inside my trailer. Although, out west, I was always a little cautious walking around a trailer that's been parked out in the weeds or whatever, you know, kind of poking around, because you never know what is in the weeds yeah the coins i guess i was thinking about and they have all these co dollar coins the dollar the money is a different color so i would worry about what's in the weeds you know poke get a stick and poke around in there you don't want something coming out of there and biting you or some creepy thing yeah just weird stuff oh they check you oh nice for who checks for fire ants there's a fire ant checkpoint now uh we would check it for is it the same guys that uh that Check the border patrol. Is there a border patrol? No. Yeah. Huh. I don't. I've never. They've ran a mirror under the truck coming out of Laredo all the time, and that's it. And they're looking for people, presumably. You know, I wouldn't think there'd be fire ants in the trailer. I don't know how they would get in there. I guess depending where it's parked. Because they go down to Mexico, and we don't see the trailer for two months. We just take all the lights out of it and everything. And then when it comes back, they put all the lights back in it because I've watched them do it. Fasting. They take all the LED lights out of the trailer and then they put in all these cheap lights. And then when it comes back, they take those lights out and put LED lights back in it. I love it. They must be like currency down there. 
and they take the little rubber grommets out of the um, where the glad hands go out also. So I guess people seal those down. They're like forty cents for two. So I never understood that. Huh? Anywhere in the southeast, I've never I've never been checked for fire hands. I e either me or the trailer. That's for sure. Yeah, it is. It's too much work. Checking for snakes is just. Ugh. You go out and you don't know what's out there. Yeah, Canada does have different hour uh, regulations. That's correct. But, you know, like I was saying here, do you, how much do you want to drive? How many hours a day do you want to drive? You want to drive 13 hours a day like they do in Canada? Not me. That isn't my thing. Yeah, okay, right. Bug checks, ag points. Right, but you get an ag thing on the uh, dashboard, right? And you get the green bean light and head through there. So, because uh, I know you can green the ag checkpoint. Like uh, like the scales, and not have to stop. And then, so right, so they want fire ants, and they want to make sure you don't have oranges. Huh. Yeah, eleven. I don't even like driving eleven hours. I think that's too long. The less is better. I don't want to spend ninety hours a week like some of these people driving. I just don't. That you know, that's not for me. People work fifty, sixty, seventy hours. That's okay if they want to do that. That isn't for me. Yeah, but you have. 13 hours a day is, just in five days, is 65 hours a week, not counting any other time that you have on duty time besides driving. So look at 70, you know, plus hours. That's crazy. That's way crazy. That's almost two jobs. It's like having two jobs. I think that's crazy. You should make more, not work more. Always, forever, since I even started this, right, people have always wanted to get more hours. How do we get more hours? I'd say, how do you get more money? Go get more money and work less time. 70 hours a week is 3,500 hours a year. That's almost two jobs for anybody else. But it doesn't pay two jobs worth of pay. It pays one job worth of pay. So that that's way high for me. But I guess the good thing is that at Tim Hortons and every corner, you'd have plenty of coffee. Stay awake to drive the extra hours. That's what I think right about that. <laughs> okay, you're going back on the road for FEMA. Going to disasters. Hmm, that's cute. That's something. I went to some trucking show years ago, and uh, that big company, not with FEMA, the private company, went uh, to, they had a booth to send people to the Middle East to uh, go over there, and it paid a huge amount of money. I can't remember the name of that company. Two name, right? It was in Texas somewhere, and I thought, oh, that was interesting, but Still, you had to be, you had to go to the Middle East and you were gone for months and everything. And so I ended up not doing it. But they were looking for prior military people that were still drivers that could go do it. So, and I don't know if they're still doing that or not. And so FEMA going to disasters, I mean, you could bring stuff down to the disasters here, right? Okay, they don't want you to take it fire ants somewhere else, right? Well, right. Maybe they should pack them all up and uh, send them to, send them north, send all the fire ants north. And uh, send them all to Montana and bury them. And then they'll freeze it up. That'd be the way to do it. Huh. Well, yeah, I mean, look, people don't like America, but, you know, they come down here and get the money or whatever. There's, there's no better place, certainly, than America, even though our coffee may not be as delicious as a hockey player's coffee. You know, we still love Canadians. We just think they have unusual colored money. That's it. And I don't go to Canada because the border crossing was always a problem coming back. Canadians let me in, but coming back was always a problem. They were inspecting. Like, what am I bringing back? And my, the trailer's a 3M marked trailer and everything. You know, so what am I bringing back? 3M, and these same guys see me. I was going all the time. I had a regular thing, so I'd go all the time. It's the same people. Like, hey, what's going on, you know, Joe or whatever? <laughs> yeah, the thing is, if you are at a FEMA and you don't have to log going through the scale, how do they know that when you go by the scale? Okay, that's the problem. So, like, what are they doing that now in the fires, right? In the fires in California, they just said that people delivering water and stuff to the, the drivers are going to be exempted for a short period of time because of the wildfires. That's okay in that local area, but I think that outside that area, you'd have a problem at the scale explaining what you're doing. Maybe they have, like, a, um, a just a little area around there or whatever, I think for that and they do this for other when we have hurricanes and stuff they tell drivers look that safety for the hours thing forget it drive as much as you want and you can do it. and you can just continue to drive and but i don't know how they know that at a scale maybe you get a piece of paper i never did it 
had in their hall, that kind of thing for water or for that or whatever. Maybe they give you some kind of exemption card to flash, like a badge. Uh, exemption, badge, exemption. I don't know how they do it. You can let all of us of us know when you get on at your FEMA job, which probably pays, you know, $2 a mile compared to the rest of us. Huh. Of course, when there's no FEMA thing, then there's no job, and that is also a problem. But you'll still probably have to log a pre-trip inspection to make sure your vehicle's safe no matter what. I think you because they give up on that, but then you're still going to do it. Make sure it's safe. Because if you, even so, if you don't have to log or whatever, if it's not safe and you have an accident, that's you. They're going to say, well, you should have made sure that's safe. Okay, personal conveyance driving again. There's no distance on being allowed to do it. There's no distance on personal conveyance. If you can personal conveyance, you can personal conveyance to your house from wherever it is or up to your company. Okay? How far are you allowed? And do you have to do a post-trip legally? Yes. Drivers are required to do a pre-trip and a post-trip no matter what people tell you because the post-trip is listed in there. You'll have to fill out a DVIR, inspect the unit, make sure and write down any problems that it has, if it has any. Okay, and if it doesn't, then you don't have to turn that, you don't have to do it really because you don't have to turn it in. If it does have problems, you have to turn that paper in to your company or wherever, you know, if you own the truck, you have a way to keep track of that paper. So there's no way to inspect the truck if... You don't log it. It's impossible because on-duty time is listed as truck inspection, inspecting the vehicle. So there's no way to do it without being on duty, period. Okay, if somebody could show me how to inspect the truck and not be on duty legally, I'm all ears. But I have yet to say have people show me that. So to do that and to do a post-trip inspection where you fill out a DVIR, which is required under the regulations, okay, if there's a problem, that you can't do it. You just can't. So you gotta log it. Sorry. And we go back to the time. How long? How long does it take you to do it? You know, in your pre-trip, you're supposed to look at the last what the last person wrote down, if there's anything written down to see and make sure that everything is fixed. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I appreciate it. Poking away from topic. Yes, we're all doing that. But you know, I always start out with something and then see where it goes. If people want to talk about pre-trip, that's fine. This personal advance, you can go as far as you want, right? A personal advance when you're going home. But your company's got to allow it. So, but you can, if you're empty somewhere and you own the truck and you go, I'm in Denver and I live in Florida, well, just PC it back to your house. As long as you don't do a load, you're not doing anything with the load, you're not doing anything like that, right? You can't have any kind of loads or whatever, fine, on, to go back to your house. No problem. Uh, because the community, yeah, well, that's a problem, right? Besides California, you didn't miss anything in California. I went to Alaska years ago uh, in the summer, though. And so it looks like this, but colder. Even then, it was 50 degrees in August when I went there. In uh, 89, maybe, 90. Oh, my gosh, that was so long ago. Right at the start of driving. I don't know if I'd do it now. I mean, you have gone two months round, round trip in that. And that was a flatbed, taking up some big piece of machinery up there. And so then I brought some thing back that went back to Dallas. It was really something. Huh. Does everybody have this pre-trip, post-trip? Required the pre-trip, required the post-trip. It's just that simple. We had a lot of comments over the weekend about it. Because it's required. It's required. You cannot inspect the truck if you don't log it. It's, it's simple as that. I appreciate that. Uh, Toby Nan, right? Thank you very much. So since you have to be on duty to inspect the truck, you have to log it, period. There's no other way to do it. I wanted to come on and impress that because everybody was saying, oh, 15 minutes, you only have to do one, you don't have to do the other. You have to do them both. And since we have to inspect on duty, it has to be logged. It's just as simple as that. You can't get it any other way. There's no way to do something to the truck without logging it, except to violate the law. And when you go to a DOT and he says, look, why did you go from the sleeper to driving? How did you do a pre-trip? How do you explain that? I, I'm satisfied it's safe. How? How are you satisfied that the vehicle is safe to drive when you didn't even get out of it? You didn't even get out of it. Somebody said that, too, that they saw somebody go from the sleeper to driving and never even got out of their truck. I'm like, where are, where are they going? Well, how do they go to the bathroom? Does, do people not walk in for that? Ugh. Yeah. Huh. But just, that was just... 
or you're not going inside, you're going inside anyway. So even if you're not going to do the truck, you've got to have this on duty. Got to have it on duty. Period. There's no other way to log it. Now, I'll wait for the comments on that. Sure, after this, people, well, no, you don't have my company said you don't have to do it or whatever. No, company doesn't get to overrule it. You know, some guy that says that doesn't get to overrule it. You have to inspect it, and you're going to want to inspect it. You're going to want to inspect it, aren't you? Don't you want it to be safe? Look, people's families are out there, so what about that? You're out there driving. You are go to work or you're driving around. You've got to... What if you do a post trip and then drive after 10 hours? Okay, when you go to drive, you have to do a pre-trip. The vehicle has to be safe for you to operate it. So if you do, then you're doing a pre-trip when you come back from driving. It's it's still... So you do a post trip, you go to bed, you get up, and then you still you have to inspect again. That's your pre-trip before you leave. Okay, split, split, split sleeper. You can split your sleeper. You can split it eight and two... Okay, right now they're changing it. So if you want to do an A, and I have a video about this, by the way, which goes over it on the board, which would be good for you to watch because I go into really into it in depth about the split sleeper. You can split eight and two if you want. So you can, you're driving, you can go eight hours in the sleeper. And so you drive six hours, you go eight hours in the sleeper. How long can you drive, right? Five hours. You go five hours and then what? You can need to sleep two hours, because eight and two is ten, and then you can drive six hours again. That's how you do it. The eight and two have to add up to ten. It can be eight and whatever, but it has to be two at least, and the eight has to be at least. And then, as long as they add up to ten or more, then everything before the first sleeper goes away, and you just add it up inside, and you can continue to do that. Now, I would recommend watching the video about the split sleeper where I go on the board, I explain it all out on the board. It's it's easier to see it on a board. That's why I did it. No, the split sleeper doesn't have to be in a 24-hour period. It's a running period. So when you split the sleeper, you can continue to run the period as long as you run it. So you 2, 8, 2, 8, 2, 8. It doesn't matter. You can continue to do that as long as you have hours and you don't violate your 70-hour rule or anything like that. You know, you can continue to split it as long as you want and then eventually you could take a 10-hour break or 30 for a break and then start all over again. And so it doesn't matter. But the one period has to be eight hours at least. It can be nine. The one, the other one has to be then two hours at least, but it can be three. So the and at the two have to add up to ten at least, but can be longer. And then the period before the first sleeper is gone. It goes away. Is running recaps better? It's easier on your body. Ah, uh, look, that's that's like we're where should you work? Because it depends on you, right? Do you like having a break? You know, do you like taking a 34 hour break? You can, uh, right, I'm with Big Huge Mike, get some sleep. But do you like, so you're running all every day, every day, every day, you never have a day off. You know, you should take some time off. Life isn't just about living in the truck, you know, 24 seven for 45 years and then nothing. You know, take some time off, get that break, go somewhere, do whatever, you know. So for me, no. But for you, maybe. Maybe you're like, oh, well, I love it. I'm going to do it forever. Fine. Then you do it yourself. Do it for a couple weeks and see how you like it. You Believe me, after a couple weeks, you're going to be tired. Because you're just running, 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 never ending, running. That's why the work week is not seven days for everybody else. Okay? And it shouldn't be for us, I don't think. You know, I'd like to see people have a life outside of work. I, You know, this is work to pay for the things that you want to do outside of here so for me no you may say this is the best thing ever i want to drive all day and you just keep on driving but i think after time you know you're gonna get sick of it work 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 every day kind of like uh, mel brooks in uh blazing saddles work 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 right <laughs> oh yeah if you run hard for 40 you're gonna move like you ran for 45 years the thing is if you did that you probably won't drive 45 years. The average driver dies at 54 years old, the average road driver. 54 years old. It's because they get up and go from the sleeper to the seat and drive. Okay? And that isn't any good. That's no good. Okay? We need to get out and move around. I don't talk about that enough on here. I should. You know, I do a lot of that. I do some of that on uh, 
Instagram. You know, I'll, I'll do some of that because I get out, I walk every morning or most mornings I get out and walk, you know, at least an hour or whatever, you know, get a good brisk walk in and you should too, you know, because the first thing you should take care of is you, really, is you because if you're sick or can't move or get, you know, that is, that's no good. You don't want to do that. You want to have energy for the day and the first thing you take care of before even you do anything else is take care of you. Get out and walk. <clears throat> so I want to encourage everybody to get out and walk starting right now if you didn't walk today. Get out there and walk, although I'm not going to, I won't harp on that today too much. I, I'll do an exercise thing, you know, about it, but you certainly should get out and walk. Yeah. But it's never too late either, right? As long as you can still, as long as you're still on this side of the ground, right, you can always go around and change, you know, and get in better shape than you were, always, as long as you're up on this side. Once you get on the other side of it, that's it. That was your time. So don't let any more time go until... You get out there and start moving around. Just get on, Just walk 10 minutes today. Get up and walk 5, 10 minutes. Do something. Do something. Everybody can do that. And I don't want to hear people, I don't have time. That's your life. Okay? And an average driver, 54 years old, and they die. And that's sad. And a lot of it is because they sit around. <clears throat> well, that's our pre-trip today. It's 2 o'clock, and I have to get to work because I always leave on Monday afternoon. But uh, So I'm going to head out of here, I think. But I want to thank everybody for going on here today. And the oil fields, uh, no, although I did a video, they're doing, they're hiring, and you're looking at 100 plus for the oil fields, for sure. Go to Craigslist and uh, check there, and check the one in Midland, Texas, and just look at the jobs. Just look at them. I appreciate that big, huge mic, and I want thanks for coming in here today. Uh, and everybody, thank you for coming in. And uh, it's time to head out to work. I appreciate everybody. Thank you. And we're going to do more of these, of course, and some more vids. And uh, let me know what you want to see. We're going to be out here everywhere. More live videos. Remember, the one-year anniversary of the channel is coming up this weekend. There will be an extravaganza. Thank you, Trucking Wife. I'm going to be, and your husband as well. well and I've asked Cirque du Soleil to appear, and I don't know. I haven't received an email back from them. So I'm not sure if they're going to show up or not. But we're going to do an extravaganza anyway, more live shows. Thanks for coming in today, and uh, as I head out 205, I'm going to head to work, and I'll see you all on the road.